We gotta make an extra post office run this week, so let's go. Alright, heading out of the post office and heading home. <laughs> okay, so we're on our way home from the post office. We had to make an extra post office trip. And I thought it would be a good time to jump on here and <laughs> tell you about the crazy month we had. So for the first week of the month, it was fine. Everything was good. The second week, um, got sick. Third week, got better just in time for a family visit. And now we're in the last week of the month and I'm finally getting around to being able to make some art again. Now, when I say make some art again, I mean like for my own personal like growth and what I, my own personal stuff that I wanna do. Like I still got my shop stuff done and I still got commissions done. Uh, I did a lot of sketching in my sketchbook, like prep work for a lot of the studies and stuff that I wanted to do this month, but I never actually got to do the studies. And so I, for that reason, it kind of feels like I didn't get a lot done, but I'll take you through all of it. I did get to go on a little art date and go to the art store, my local art store, and I let myself buy a couple of supplies, guys. And I know I'm on, still on a no-buy. It's been almost two years that I've been on this no-buy, but this year um, I finally broke down and bought myself, let myself buy a couple of things because I just wanted to and I have been feeling cruddy about like my progress and stuff like that and sometimes you just need a little retail therapy and it just makes you feel better and it's stuff that I'm gonna use so I will show you that too so yeah so let's take a look back at all the crap that I got done or didn't get done in September
<laughs> okay guys, so this is it. So we're finally painting this month. So the whole point of my practice in September was supposed to be for painting and it's probably the thing that I did the least in the whole month, but, but I am proud of myself that we finally made it. So the idea here was that uh, I wanted to make sure that I was actually thoughtfully practicing with this painting and not just painting, you know, for fun like we do sometimes. Um, but I wanted to make it purposeful. And so there were three things that I did in this uh, in these two little studies that I think were a really worthwhile experiment and something I definitely will try again uh, in this sketchbook and probably will introduce into my longer term practice because I think that they were so successful. So the first of those three things was um, the underpainting that you saw. So when we started with the oils here, uh, you might have noticed that there was already paint on the page. These started off as uh, colored pencil drawings that I did in my oil painting sketchbook. I did lots of those this month, uh, just in preparation for what I thought was going to be a lot of painting. But they started off as uh, pencil sketches, and normally that's all the underpainting that I do. Um, but this time around, I wanted to try and do an acrylic underpainting um, for a couple of reasons. One was just because I'm not a fan of painting directly on the paper, not, at least the paper in this sketchbook. It's a weird paper. It's kind of like cardstock. I've mentioned it before, and the paint just doesn't react all that well to it. But uh, painting on top of acrylics is actually much, much better. Uh, it also helps with an issue that I mentioned in a previous video where I felt like the colors just felt a little washed out. And so in this painting, I definitely feel like having the underpainting there helped my colors kind of sit on top. And uh, I think it also helped me, <laughs> frankly, get over my lack of confidence. And the, probably the real reason that I didn't do a lot of painting this month is because I just wasn't feeling confident about it. Like I felt like I wanted to paint because I felt like I needed to paint or I was supposed to paint, but not because I felt confident that I could actually work through any of the things that I wanted to work through. And it allowed me to kind of work out where my warm and cool tones were gonna be. It allowed me to sort of figure out a little bit of my color but also just get warmed up with the paintbrush in a kind of a low risk kind of way because with acrylics, unlike oils, you can simply let it dry for five seconds and then paint right over it if you don't like what you did. The second thing that I did, and this is a this is this was a scary one for me, guys. The second thing that I did was painted these pups from memory. Most of the time when I paint, even if I've already done a really detailed drawing, I will still look at the reference when I'm going in with the color because I want to make sure that I'm getting, you know, getting everything right. With this, I did it from memory for a couple of reasons. One was that I didn't want to get bogged down in the concerns of likeness. And that's probably sounds weird for a portrait painter to say, but uh, because I was practicing my painting techniques, I didn't want to get too worried about whether or not this looked like this dog. And it's partly the reason why I didn't do a full portrait. I just painted like part of the face here, no eyes, no ears specifically because I wanted to be able to not even just focus, but not get confused, like not, not lose track of what it is that I was trying to figure out and learn here. I just wanted to go with what I had captured initially in the, in the drawing. And I actually think that when I look back at the reference now, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell that I didn't have that reference in front of me when I was working on these. Um, okay, so the last thing that I did um, that was really kind of new for me here 
is with this painting, I really tried to not just focus on the light and dark, but also on the hue and the saturation. So uh, I think I've read a lot in theory about the uh, oscillation between warm and cool tones in your painting and the importance of that in sort of creating depth. And I, but I never really thoughtfully, I guess, tried to accomplish that. So that was one thing I wanted to do. And so you'll see in kind of the, um, in the forms around the snout in the pinks, you'll see some blues and in the yellows, you'll see some greens. So I wanted to make sure that I did that. Um, but also another thing that came into play and particularly in the end was just the, um, kind of the, the bumping up of the saturation in the lights. And so when I was working into those lights, I really wanted to make sure that the yellows had some areas at least where the yellows and golds really popped and same thing with the pinks and same thing, th same thing with the whites. And I did that by just adding a little bit of blue. So all in all, I think, I think all of these changes are things that I would try again for sure. And I actually think that they're things that I will, in some way, shape, or form, I will try my best to incorporate into my regular practice, even outside of oil painting, just because I, I feel like these were so much more successful than I would have expected. I'm just so glad that I took this opportunity and did not let the month go without giving this a try. Okay, we got a little bit of an art haul. So let's start with my favorite thing to buy, which are books. And I got two books this month. First book is The Complete Masters of the Poster. So these are plates of uh, French, I'll say Art Nouveau and maybe some Art Deco. Uh, advertising illustrations, which happen to just be probably my favorite thing in the world. So let's take a little bit of a look at what we have in here. So these are just, just the plates. There's not really a whole lot of text in this one. It's just the artwork, which is fine with me. Um, I, I think each one is references the artist. So that's always helpful, but yeah, this is, this is some of my favorite work. I absolutely, I love not just the style of them, but I love the colors that were available that they used so much red. I just, I just absolutely love them. All right. So you guys get the idea of what's in here and you can obviously go and find all of these online, but just having a book on your shelf that you can pull out and just immediately get this variety of artists and so much, so much inspiration and so much to learn from. I love having these books just immediately available, like right at my hand. Now we've got another book and this one is paintings. Again, a collection of a number of different artists, but the thing that these all have in common is these are all paintings of dogs or that include dogs. And there's a variety of styles in here. So let's take a look. 
There are lots of, this is on the cover, there are lots of traditional paintings in here, like traditional oil paintings. I've been studying pretty actively for the past four or five years and I'm still finding out about artists that I really love that I've never heard of before. So again, this is a variety of styles included in here, but also a variety of media. So you've got everything from oil paintings to sketches and drawings. You've got plates, prints. I love this one. But then you also have, let's take a look in here. Look at, look at how sketchy that is. That's beautiful. Then you also have some, there's even a photograph in here, but some like, some things that look like they're probably like lino or woodcuts. And then like these, I'm not sure exactly how these were done, if these are like pen and ink, but that's what they look like to me, is I think there's so much to learn from the line work in not just the dog, but in the backgrounds. Just the use of kind of the solid color shapes and then the different foliage shapes from like tiny, really small to pretty large. Even just these simple circles with this thing, they're like donut shapes, but these are little donuts in the, in the bushes. But yeah, so the variety of the styles in here means that again, I can come and pick up this book and just get immediate inspiration and maybe even inspiration to do something that I never would have even considered or never would have thought of. I love these studies so much. I love seeing work in progress, like unfinished work. It just tells so much of the story of how the artist was thinking about completing, completing the information here and just creating, creating the image that they wanted to create with whatever the tools are that they had. So I love both of these books. And actually this was the book that I was talking about when I said that I wanted to st do some master studies in my oil painting sketchbook because there are a lot of paintings in this book and every single one it seems like has a different kind of approach to it. And there's so many things that now I'm looking at and I'm thinking, how did they do that? I really want to try it. I really want to try like I'm just looking at some of these like little intricate things here where I'm seeing little brush strokes and color specifically like color values against one another. Things like this where you see lots of lots of line work within the painting. So yeah, so lots of ideas, lots of things that I could try and definitely still want to get to that. Um, but we got to figure out, <laughs> we got to figure out a good time for that. But on to the next batch of supplies that we got. Okay. Next up, mm, I'll say kind of an impulse buy. I've been wanting to try these for a while and, um, I really love some of the ink work that I've been seeing lately and I've been taking a couple of classes that are working in ink and so I wanted to get some but I didn't want to get just regular pen ink. Um, I wanted to try acrylic ink and so that's what I got here. So I've got mostly De La Roni acrylic inks but I did get a couple of Liquitex because I heard that you can mix those pigments, the acrylic inks with the acrylic paints. And um, so that definitely want to give that a try. But here we've got the De La Roni brand acrylic inks. And I've got here, I've got my yellows and my reds. So I went for two different reds, one earthy, more earthy red, and then a more pinky red, which is that magenta. And I went for a darker yellow because I mostly will probably use the white for kind of picking out some highlights. Um, I got this Dr. Martin's pen white because I do you I do have some technical pens that I haven't used in a really long time, and they're practically new. 
And I thought it would be great if I could put it in the pens and just use that for some fine detail where I need to and then go also use it with a brush when I need to. So, okay, so that's that haul. Okay, and finally, I did go ahead and buy myself, and this was this was not a splurge. I went and bought, purchased probably the least expensive or one of the least expensive um, fountain pens that you can get, but I, it had good reviews. Um, I've read good things about it, so I've got this Pilot version of this fountain pen. It's supposed to have a flexible nib, which is going to be, I think, better for drawing, but we'll find out. And it's got a fillable, uh, refillable cartridge here. So I can put my own ink in it, which was kind of important. Um, so I got that one. And then I also got a pack of two of these similar fountain pens, but this one has a brush nib. So I really wanted to give that a try and see if that was something that I'd be able to draw with. Now, when I heard brush nib, I thought it was gonna be like an actual paintbrush, but this feels more like um, like a marker brush tip, um, which I guess makes a little bit more sense when you think about it, um, that you're gonna be filling it with ink. So we'll see, we'll see how how well that works. I actually did get my own ink. And so this is ink from Noodlers, which <laughs> I just love the name. Again, I didn't know any, I don't really know anything about pen ink. So I just went with what had some good reviews and this one did, and it was a, a reasonable price. And I thought the illustrations on the boxes were really cute. So it's only three ounces of ink, but it's a pretty big bottle. And um, yeah, so I got Lexington Gray. So I thought, let's start with a bluish gray ink. Um, I don't know why, it's just a color that I really, really, I really like. So that's what I wanted to start with. My next step is to get this ink into probably this pen first and yeah, we'll see how it works. Okay guys, that's it for me today. That's it for me this month actually. Thanks so much for coming along and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you wanna see more. And yeah, I'll see you soon.